Okay, we are going through the transition from 6-4 to 4-4 time. And I'm going to play the clip one more time and listen for Edge's strumming pattern here as he enters and starts 4-4 time. He's going to do something like this. And I'm going to simplify it here, but it's going to be something like... Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's listen for it. Here we go. Here comes 4 4. Da, 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 da. Now there's some different strumming strokes in there, and he changes this up all the time. Uh, so there's no wrong, right or wrong way really to do this. You just want to use it to get as an intro into, in the, into um, your pace and your tempo into the main riff, which we're going to cover in a moment. But what you heard there, let me play it one more time, just so I can hear, see if I can emulate exactly what he's doing. Da, 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 da. So the simple way to do this is just go... Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. That's a simple way to do it. You can, it's that simple. And by the way, I'm playing the same basic chord. Okay, I'm keeping this finger down here in the 12th. All right, zoom in just a little bit. Okay. Uh, and it's just that same chord. Okay, keep that down. And you're only playing the G, the B, and the E string. You can make it that simple if you want. And then we're going to go into... We're going to do that in a minute, but it's all, all it is is... Now, he might be putting in a few little muted quick check strums in there, okay? I can think I barely hear it. He's doing something like... It's the same type of... Um, tempo pace to it, but you can put that in there. Let's listen to it again. Da, 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 da. Like that. And that's... Or so you can do this. Or it sounds a little smoother, a little cooler to go. And what I'm doing there is down, up, up, down, up, up, down. Okay. And yeah, just a little bit of scratching in there. It's a little bit, it's a lighter up tick than it is a down. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a lighter uh, upstroke than it is a downstroke. So you get that emphasis on certain strokes, okay? Something like that, okay? So you can do that, or you can do this. And then we're going to go into the next riff. And you can listen to different versions of this song live, and you'll hear slightly slight variations of that strumming pattern but they're all fairly similar, and Edge is just kind of playing with it uh, however he feels to get into the next uh, transition. Notice on this clip, when he starts this, that listen to the drum crashes. All of a sudden they start going ch -ch -ch -ch. That's again, to me, evidence that we are now officially at starting of that strumming in 4-4 four -four time. One more time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
one and two and three and four. And there you go. That's the transition is clearly defined as possible from 6-4 to 4-4, four, four, and you have all the notes now to be able to do it. You have or whatever you're comfortable with. You can figure out something that you like. And then we're going to go into the famous uh, difficult strumming riff because there's a lot of coordination between the right and left hand here. So um, we will do that part next. Okay, so we are moving on. We are moved into 4-4 four, four time on Where the Streets Have No Name. And we are going to cover now this riff that uh, is so famous. After the main riff in the intro and you're in 4-4 four, four time, there is this fairly tricky rhythm pattern and coordination between the right and the left hand. So let's see if we can take you through it. Now, same, and always remember to do a tune check. We're pretty good there. So um, you're on this main riff chord uh, pattern. You're on the 10th on the B and the E. You're putting down the ring finger on the 12th and the G, and you're putting this one down on the uh, G behind the ring finger on the G also. Now, you're going to only play again throughout this pattern. You're going to play only the G, B, and the E chord. All right? I'm going to do a little zooming in. Now, if you're only going to play those, then um, what I like to do, by the way, is on the tip of this finger here, I like to mute the D string. Okay? Hopefully you can see that right there. So that in case I do play, or excuse me, um, yeah, I like to mute the, the D right there. So I come over the G even though these two fingers are on the G. So it doesn't matter about this, the, the, the G here, but I'm going up to that G string so I can get my tip against the, the D string. And the reason I do that is sometimes I hit the D by mistake. You do not want to hit the E, the A, or the D string. Okay, So you're only playing the G, the B, and the E and I like to mute the D just in case I hit it right there. All right, So that's why you see my finger here all the way up there. Now, you're going to be playing this strumming pattern and it's going to involve this third ring finger coming up and off the G string at certain times. Okay, And I'm going to do my best to take you through when that happens. But the two basic chords are this and this. Okay. Now, I'm going to show it to you just between these two notes. I'm going to try to put in your head what you should try to think about. I'm going to try to I'm going to strip this down to its very basics. And this is what I hear and I've slowed down the song, a number of these live songs, and I think I do have this I do really do believe I have this 100% right. If not, it's 98%. It's really really close. But um, think of these two notes. And then let's strip it down and go through that, um, what the pattern is going to sound like, using only those two notes. So here we are in the riff. Let's play it real quick. So what do you hear? I hear da 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 so using the g string okay that's what you should think first if we can get that ingrained into your mind then you will have a better shot when you're playing this pattern and getting it right. A lot of people play this really strange ways, and not that they're wrong, it's just you can change the strumming pattern up. But, um, you know, a lot of people, you, it's not just this. You, know, you can do all sorts of strange stuff and not sound right. Certainly not that. Okay, there's 
all sorts of strange ways to do this, but what I'm trying to show you is exactly what Edge is doing because it does have a really nice touch to it um, and he has to do with the way he lifts this finger and when he does it and how he's strumming at the same time. So what I'm trying to do is break it down for you to hear this. Now I'm playing it slow here. And I'm gonna have to speed it up to play with the edge. But, and I usually don't play it this way, so I might make a couple mistakes. But let me play this with the edge and to show you what I mean, okay? But listen for that kind of pattern. That is. So, if you get this down first and do it on one single string and get your coordination working between the left and the right hand, you're going to have a much better chance of playing it the way Edge is playing it. So, let's go through that. Okay, I'm just going to play these two notes on the G string, on the 12th and 11th fret. And I'm going to try to get my up and down strokes right. I'll try to correct for it later when I do the strumming, but I think I'm doing it... Uh, the, the strokes here that I do on a single string are going to be very close, if not the same, to what I do when I play the whole strumming pattern. Okay, so we do this. And you can see, I'm not going to go up, down, up, down. I think you can see it here in HD and I'm going to accentuate my picking so you'll see up, down, up, down. And I'll do it slow. And notice when I lift this finger, okay? Watch between the picking and between this finger. All right, one more time. might have left a note out of there, but that's the very basics that you need to get in your head. Let's listen to it again. And the tricky part is this, it's that. Because he comes down back on that very quick. So, so you gotta practice that, see? There, that was it. That's what's happening. I'm slowing it down and I'm speeding up, so start slow. That's what you're gonna have to do strumming that whole chord progression. You're gonna move right into the poor chord progression now, and you're gonna do the same thing, but strum just the G and the B and the E strum. Strokes. And that is the main riff. So let's see now. Uh, uh, if I can get 
uh, the specific up and down strokes while I'm playing these chords to make sure I'm playing it the same way I did when I was doing the picking. But let's listen to um, Ed Sheeran. I'll play the chords this time. And I'll try to play it. He's playing it pretty quick, so you got to start slow and then work up to it. There you go. That's the, I figured out, my last tutorial didn't go through it this way. I tried to go through every strum on the chords, and then I thought of, hey, these are the basic two notes. What are the pattern of those two notes? And let's just play slowly that pattern with the picking of one string. I think it makes it easier for you to get it ingrained in your head. Then you can move to the actual chord and start doing the strumming in the same way. Um, so I'm trying to build it up uh, for you to make it a little easier. Sometimes when I slow down, I don't do the exact same strumming. I don't know why, it's just a brain thing. But uh, I'm gonna try to do it fast here, and then I'll slow it down. I've got it here zoomed in, so try to see the up and down strokes. The beginning's down, 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 down. Ta da! There we go. Okay, let's put it all together here. Moving from four, six four to four four time. I'm not. I don't have the delay on. I'm playing with the edge, so you can hear maybe the notes a little more clearly. Here's what it all, how it all comes together. And of course, it sounds, always sounds much, much better with the delay. The streets have no name. We just got through probably some of the most difficult parts of the song because that strumming pattern seems to trick people up quite a bit, and you got the transition from the six four, four from the six four to the four four time, or if you want to call it three four, that works too. Uh, so there you go. Um, thorough, hopefully, analysis of the, where the streets have no name. We will continue to move on from here. Uh, there's now another transition after we're doing that strumming pattern for a while. He's going to do one more thing down here. And then we're going to move up, or I guess that's down, down the frets here to uh, first, uh, second position, or first position, I should say. And we're going to do some muted scratching and some D, G, B minor, and A chords. 
Um, so we'll do that next. Thanks for watching.